Welcome back! Today I wanted to talk about the Black Sails theme song composed and played by Bear McCreary where he famously uses a hurdy-gurdy and that happens to be the instrument that I play. I will break it down in sections, talk a little bit about what is happening on the hurdy-gurdy side of things and I will play the section for you and leave you with some of my Musing, so it's going to be a bit of an, an analysis slash tutorial reaction kind of thing. <laughs> okay, let's get started. Okay. So you have a drone in C, but what you can hear is this really weird, almost rhythmically stuttering sound. This is not a feature. Bear McCreary said in an interview that he recorded this on a day that his instrument was dying. And I don't think he can replicate this specific sound anymore. The sound of the Black Sails main title is this instrument on a day that it was breaking. I actually can't recreate it. It was doing this weird... It was doing this weird thing where it's like... It was this drone, but it was like, it was like limping and lopsided and I quickly put the mics up and I recorded it. That's the sound of black sails. And if you listen carefully, especially to the first couple of bars, you can hear what sounds like wood scraping on wood. What I think happened is that he had a problem with his wheel or the bearings or in his axle, maybe both. And this could be due to some shift in the weather and that could have moved his wheel. I think it was scraping against the soundboard. Um, a hurdy gurdy has a ridiculously small tolerance where it will work correctly. So if something moves just a teeny tiny bit because the humidity spikes, it happens, they are made of wood. You can actually end up with problems like this. And this is why a lot of hurdy-gurdy players are so fanatical about build quality. It is so you limit the odds of things that you have no control over like this happening. Because the last thing you want is to have this happen 20 minutes before a concert, believe me. But back to the theme. Can you imitate this when you play it yourself? I guess, like, it is never going to sound the same because this is what his Gurdy did on that particular day. And I am quite sure he also enhanced the effect while editing. It is not a regular rhythm, it is not a trumpet, so to get something close to this you would have to crank haltingly, but that is very difficult to do consistently with such an irregular vibe. So I wouldn't bother with it, but that is me. There is the main melody. It is in C minor. There is no trumpet. Um, it has a kind of note in the gal swing thing going on. Um, the tuning is not optimal, which is all right, I guess. It is pirate music. Uh, I can also tell he's playing with a lot of string pressure. And what also pops out are the bends. They are as much as a whole note in some places. Now, he can do that because he plays a grotta lira, and that is an instrument with a single chanter. Most hurdy gurdies are going to have two or more chanters, and those have a lot more pressure behind the keys, so you're not going to be able to bend the note that much. Um, I cannot for the life of me tell <laughs> what the chanter is tuned to. Logic would dictate a G, so that is how I play it, but who knows.
is a more quiet spot. There are some harmonies from the accordion and the violin, but the Hurdy Gurdy stays on the C drone. And we have a slow melody going up, and this is where the arrangement gets a bit tonal. Uh, the Hurdy Gurdy is a drone instrument. The drone will stay on the same note, so it is really good at modal music. Uh, you can play this on a hurdy-gurdy and it will sound okay, but without the harmonic context of the other instruments, it will sound a bit uh, weak. We're back at the main theme with some variation and we're playing it three times. This time instead of two. Time. <laughs> now you can hear during the final phrase there is a second line of Hurdy Gurdy walking up to the high C. And we end on a sort of C minor 7th chord walking down to the root note. He does the most interesting trill on the high C which I have not heard before like usually we do trills by hitting the note above and bear does like a vibrato on a key so you can trill with the open string of sorts it is a good sound I like it I cannot copy it at the drop of a hat though and um, there's also a tiny bit of crunch all the way at the end and this is an adjustment thing it is that string pressure that I mentioned. Final thoughts. Is the Hurdy Gurdy really a pirate instrument? Well, I have never watched Black Sails myself, but I did a Wikipedia and it told me that the first season is set in 1715, so the early 18th century. Um, this is about the same time the Hurdy Gurdy went through a surge of popularity in France amongst the nobilities, and they were also responsible for refining the instrument into the system we still sort of use today. Sort of. A lot has happened in the past 30 years. Um, that is a whole different topic and rabbit hole, but you could say it is set sort of, or maybe just before the Gertie Renaissance of the 18th century. However, that does not mean they took them on their ships. <laughs> that is such an extreme environment. I think the odds of one working there without synthetic strings and plywood wheel, close to zero. Um, Will the pirates maybe have heard them or played them at home? Like, yeah, totally. Like, I cannot speak for the Caribbean and the amount of Hurdy Gurdy's present there. I have no sources or knowledge about that. I guess they were maybe not completely vibing with the whole pastoral thing, pretending to be a dainty shepherdess. It was a thing back then. But anyway, Hurdy Gurdy's do show up a lot in mid 17th century paintings as an instrument for buskers. They were known as a way for poor musicians to make a living. I think it is pretty safe to say that people in those social classes in 1715 will at the very least have heard of them. Would this make a good folk tune? Uh, 
In case you don't know, I play a lot of instrumental dance music from the early 18th century, so about from the same era. And this one is cool, but very short. Like, if you strip away the harmonies and the variation, there isn't a lot of beat to it, and most of the harmonies don't make a lot of sense when you're playing solo. Uh, it makes sense in the entity and arrangement that is the theme song, but this is not something I would personally use while busking, because there just isn't a lot there. Do I think this is a good theme song? Absolutely. Do I think this is a good Hedy Gurdy performance? Um, no, I don't think this is representative of the instrument or the music of the time. Let me explain. Um, it is important to realize that this theme isn't meant as a literal representation of literal pirates making literal music. It is symbolic. And I think this sound tells you that you're seeing a story that is out on the high seas, but it's about broken people. It's about sad, dark individuals. This is not a fun swashbuckling adventure. It is designed to fit with the themes of the series and make you feel certain things. That is what a composer for film and television aims for. And in this case, it is supposed to communicate that this is a story in a different world about broken people leading very difficult lives. And just the fact that he uses a hurdy-gurdy helps in putting you, as the viewer, in that state of mind. Because the hurdy-gurdy isn't really part of the collective unconsciousness anymore. So hearing one automatically makes you go, huh, that is strange. Which helps Bear McCreary in achieving his goal. And the iffy tuning does the same, because to a modern audience that feels a bit wrong. But all of that has nothing to do with reality. It has to do with what we feel reality is. And often we tend to simplify it so it can be used as a shorthand in cases like this. 18th century music for the normal people was actually <laughs> pretty refined. Like, yes, you had the fancy highbrow performances and in front they wrote this really beautiful virtuoso concerto pieces for Hedy Gurdy. But Music for regular people was by no means ugly. Like, people were the same as they are now. They liked to listen to beautiful music and express themselves just like we do. And even lower classes went to the theater. Like, think of it this way. You would not say somebody from the working class nowadays is inherently less musical. And the same thing for 300 years ago. Also, here is a fun fact. In the Middle Ages, there was a thing called a shame flute, which was like a pillory for bad musicians. So all I am saying is we did not acquire musical taste in the last 100 years. It is a cool tune. It is a very good theme song. It is a very effective performance that works well with the theme song. But with this adjustment and tuning, it isn't an example of a good Hedy Gurdy performance, in my personal opinion. But that is okay, it is not supposed to be, so. That was it, I hope you enjoyed and found this interesting. Uh, like, comment, subscribe and all that good stuff, but most importantly, take care and be nice to each other and I'll see you next time. Bye.